still alive. This valve. Maybe. That's good. Ah, oh, thank God. I don't know what's wrong with that man. Stanley came into Rory's pub tonight, sweaty and out of breath. His eye was swollen, his lip was bleeding, and he looked as proud as a peacock. He and one of his no-good maids went messing into East Belfast to stir up trouble. Stanley had the brilliant idea to spray the story plough over a Unionist mural, but they got caught by some locals and they got into a scrap. Rory thought that was a gas and bought Stanley a pint. I told Stanley he was an idiot. What if he'd been caught by the guard or the UVF? They'd have bloody killed him. But he was just too proud of himself to listen. Another bunker? How many are there? Yes, hurts from trying to smile all night. I can't blame Stanley. There's no way he could have known. He's not that cruel. He knew I was named after Beethoven's opera and just assumed that I'd be a fan. But it was my father who loved the opera. He'd blast those records into the night and stagger about with a half-empty bottle, waving it in time with the music. It was terrifying. But I love Stanley. So, I gripped his hand and smiled through the entire performance. These pipes... I must all be connected. Stanley, are you there? Oh, it's so cold. I can't stop shivering. My leg, it's gone numb. <laughs> At least it doesn't hurt anymore. Am I falling asleep? Oh, I thought I heard voices. I don't remember what time it is. I think it 
to be dark soon. But I don't think I'll make it through the night. You've got to stay warm. Oh, God. Hypothermia must be setting in. Molly and I snuck out to a party tonight. It was in full swing by the time we got there, meaning all the boys were bollocksed. Well, not all. We weren't there long when this beautiful lad hands me a beer and said his name was Colin. I was tall, with bright green eyes, and he wore neon coloured runners. I asked him if it was his party. He shook his head and said that he knew it was my party. Then he turned and waved his hand around like he was the great fucking Gatsby. And the first thing we saw was Stanley Whitaker throwing up in the kitchen sink. <laughs> I laughed and said he could have his party back. And we blathered for a while and we were really getting on when Stanley Whitaker stumbled over and asked Colin if he ever wore those shoes outside. And before I could tell him to fuck off, Stanley asked Colin if he knew I was the daughter of Michael O'Shea. I felt my legs go numb. Colin couldn't get away from me fast enough. This thing. Christ, I hope it's big enough to protect me. The 
black smoke. I'm nearly there. No. No! I was right there. What do you want from me? Tell me what you want from me. Pull it together, Stan. The sooner you find Leonor, the sooner you can get her off this fucking island. Just find her. I will not be a prisoner's wife. I will not become like those other empty wives, like my mother. I will not be looked after or taken care of, isolated. There is no light without him. He is my heart, and I cannot live without my heart. I'll do whatever it takes to get him out. I will not be a prisoner's wife. What's going on with Stanley? I'm afraid he's gone mad. Tonight I was waiting for him at Rory's pub. Rory was complaining about his fucking hand again. When Stanley finally showed up, he looked white as a ghost. He grabbed my elbow and said we had to go. I'd been there a while, so I was in no mood to be handled. I told him to sit down while I finished my pint. But he snatched it from my hand and smashed it on the floor. Oh, Rory started shouting bloody murder, and that's when Stanley went for him. He threw himself at Rory, clutching for his throat. Rory was so shocked he slipped and fell to the floor. It took all my strength to pull Stanley off and drag him toward the front door. Rory stayed behind the bar, cursing all the Whitakers. Leonor, please call. Let me hear your voice. Ah, oh, of course. This ain't a fucking handle.
many funerals today. I was with Stanley at his father's funeral. There was quite a crowd of people. I told Stanley his father would be proud of the turnout, but he said Paddy would just want to make a speech. The police were watching the crowd, but they didn't bother anyone. They were hidden, but I spotted them straight away. I had to help Stanley write the eulogy for Paddy, but when it came time to read it, he couldn't speak. He gripped the sides of the lectern so hard I feared it would splinter in his hands. Finally, Stanley said Paddy was the speech maker, but he wasn't enough like his father to do him justice. He just folded up the speech and left in silence. I wonder why I keep these damn journals. There are so many things I wish I could forget. Today at the school site, my senses were filled with the buzzing of insects and the smell of the jungle. But then, all at once, I thought I was back in Belfast. The air rocked with a heavy thud of a bomb exploding. Stanley took off in a dead run towards the sound. A cow had set off an old landmine, and there was a man at the edge of the field shouting for everyone to stay back. But Stanley, he charged past him, splashing into the mud. I wanted to stop him. My voice froze in my throat when I saw Stanley lift the tiny body out of the grass. The boy's name was Udom. He had been walking with the cow. Udom's father collapsed. Stanley gently passed the boy to him. Udom's father kept apologizing over and over for not protecting him from the evils brought to this village. Finally, an open door. 